Let's go. Welcome to the Trusted Leader Show. I'm your host, David Horsager. Join me as I sit down with influential leaders from around the world to discuss why leaders and organizations fail, top tactics for high performance, and how you can become an even more trusted leader. Welcome to the Trusted Leader Show. It's David Horsager. I have a special guest. She's got real snow as her background. If you're watching this, most of you are listening. Her name is Ginger Johnson. Welcome, Ginger. Hey, David. So, so happy to be here. Thank you. I'm glad to have you. You grew up in Minnesota. You went to college in Minnesota, but for years you've been, you've lived a lot of different places. And today you are in Missoula, Montana. That's where you call home these days. And I see snow in the background. Yes, it feels so good. That's a connecting point right there. You know this, David. When we are where we want to be geographically, whether it's permanent or traveling, we have a deeper, richer meaning to ourselves and our work. It's it's like, yeah, why would I not do this? Exactly. Well, this is this is gonna be fun. Yes. Give us a couple, just a couple little inside tips, things no one knows. Maybe start with that cool, not everybody can see your cool. <laughs> haircut. And uh, we are going to get into you as really a chief connector. Connection is the, the sixth pillar of trust in our research and our work. You're an expert on connection. We're going to jump into that in a moment, but get personal for, for a second and maybe jump into the Mohawk. <laughs> it's Mohawk. It, it came about organically. I, I don't like to fuss with my hair. For some people, it's just hair, which that's I'm that's my camp. Some people, it matters a lot more. But I, it just morphed over the years. It's been long. It's really curly. It's really curly naturally. And it's custom colored, by the way, if you're watching this. Like Mother Nature. It looks very it. cool. I'll tell you what. <laughs> it's, I, it's, I, it's, it, it is connecting, right? You, I, I like this. Well, you know, as a friend, you said this before. You said it's like uh, like being pregnant on your head. Yeah. Yeah. People are compelled to comment on it. Doing the drive-by compliment or the whatever. It's a little long on the side. So if you're watching, you know, it, it, you don't quite see the skin, but we're getting there. And it's become kind of a signature look. And I, and I like it. It's nice and cool in the summer, although, you know, bundle up in the winter. Yeah. Well, yeah. you've got some amazing clients about, uh, you know, your connection work. I've, uh, we know each other and I'm just, um, just really love your work and I love how it fits with the work we do with trust. But let's yeah. jump into connection. People are wondering some some real questions today and we can go all over in this time, but people yeah. are really wondering, how do I connect virtually? How do we stay connected in this virtual environment? Can you give us some some tips? You're, you're a leader trying to lead a team. You don't get to see your people all the time. What do you do? Yeah, excellent question, David. Let me give you three really useful points right here on virtual online connecting. Number one, make sure that you have enough space. Let's talk about the physical first and then we'll get into the mental and some of the emotional. Physical space, like I'm literally standing in front of a picture window. I have space around me to move around. When you are online, give as much of yourself in, show as much of yourself as possible. So if you can show from the waist up, that's so much better because when we're in person, we see the whole person. So that's the first one, physical space, show up in a bright solid color as much as possible. That is easy. like I'm wearing red today. I often wear turquoise or yellow or something like that. So that's a physical piece of how to connect better because that color, like I got the art background, uh, color has everything to do with our engagement and, and as well our disengagement. Okay. So that's hmm. a, that's a physical piece. Another piece, emotional piece is start a few minutes before you're actually going to start. Like give people, open the foyer. You know, let people in, David, just like when we have people over to our home, we don't like, well, stay out there until dinner is served and then I'll let you in. No, no, no. Let people in because we are starved for, even in a quote, regular world, we're starved for those interactions that warm us up. It's the on-ramp. So give yourself three to five, eight minutes to like, hey, everybody, and then have something you want to ask people. One of my greatest points I would offer, David, is when you're welcoming people into an online room as well as a physical room is ask what people are grateful for in that moment. It can be anything because you know this, trust, it, gratitude, connection, that's huge. That's the bedrock. When we are grateful, we trust. When we are grateful, we connect, all those things. So that's one of the um, pieces. A third piece is- so, so before you get to number three, I just want to comment. This is really great. And what this does, by the way, I, I love where this takes people because grateful takes people up, right? Mm -hmm. We started uh, we start every one of our weekly meetings as a staff and we're in person these days. But our number one first question around the boardroom table is, 
what are you grateful or ex- or what are you celebrating personally? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what are you celebrating from last week at work? Oh. So what 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 do we celebrate? It takes us up like, oh hell, I just had this happen with my kids or this and it's quick. Our team can whip right. around it. It's not some big lunk. And um and then the other is what are you grateful for at work? Like what 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 are we celebrating at work? And it just brings people toward moving up and forward. And it doesn't mean we don't have to see the blind spots or yes. deal with mitigating risk or close gaps. And right. doesn't mean we're certainly not incredibly imperfect here at the Institute, but it brings us forward. So I love that. So yeah. number one, look at the physical space. I just yes. learned something right there. Yes. Number two, the emotional space and start by asking a question. Love it. Next. Right. And the third we'll build on these two is as you let people in, as you show up more fully physically, ask different questions, ask intentional questions. So I just gave a a dinner party experience for a board of directors in Nashville, uh, David, and um, I was brought in to provide, you know, they're gonna eat dinner anyway, so let's have a, a different experience so we get into the board meeting better, so we communicate better. So have intentional questions. Have questions that are slightly unexpected, that are personal enough, not intimate. Here, I'll give you my one of my go-tos is, Tell the story with a certain number of people and you can delineate those people or you can go the whole room. Tell the story of your first paycheck job. Like, oh, everybody's got one of those. The stories that come out with that, David, are so fun. They are automatically connecting points. They are offering. And what you're doing by asking those intentional questions is you're helping people then immediately, just like you do with your meetings, you set the bar higher immediately. So everything that dominoes after that is way more intentional. Those conversations around that question, seemingly innocuous, yet it's very strategic because then I get into the headspace like, oh, this is something that's real. It's not like if you were an animal, what what would you be? Like that doesn't go anywhere. Who cares? See a giraffe. And if you talk about, oh yeah, my shoe store, you had a shoe store one too, or my uncle or my, my, my grandma or something. It goes in a completely, it, it's so much more constructive it's so much more meaningful. It definitely helps establish trust because you're sharing a story that's personal. There's a difference between personal and intimate, but ask intentional questions from the get-go. I love this. So we've got a question for number two, which is, what are you grateful for? You, you got a qu- yeah, exactly. You got a second question. Tell a story of a page. Do you have one more question, by the way, that connects that could connect in this? Yeah. Um, I do. One is more personal. Um, what I would let's see here. What's another good one? Okay, sure. Yeah, I've got a whole litany of them. Um, one is there's a pile of airline tickets in front of you on the table. You pick one of those up. You can go anywhere. Where would that be? Travel, as you and I both know, even before we started recording the show, travel is a portal into who people are. Where do you want to go? I just want to, I want to do a staycation. I'm stay here. I'm turning my phone off. I'm getting the movies. I'm making cookies, whatever. Or it's, oh, I'm flying off to Greece or I'm going to Dubai or I'm going to Wisconsin, whatever it is. Travel tells a different story about who we are. And because we connect so differently, like I'm sure that the people, if you're listening right now, you've got your own travel stories and you've got your own magic with those, whatever that spectrum of magic is from, oh, from holy buckets to amazing grace on that one. Like, yeah, yes. travel next. So that's that's another one. Like, where would you go tomorrow if you could go anywhere? I love it. I, and you could, pro- I, I, I'm just jumping around to other things that connect people. Like, what would you read? What book would you pick up? What would, you, you know, those are, those are, so yeah, knowing people, connecting more. I gotta, I gotta jump one more place on this before I get to the next Wait. question. And that is, you know, I've got, I'm just thinking personally, got a massive pharmaceutical company we're working with. They're all over the world. Some of the leaders might be in Europe where all their people are in the States or Japan or, in, you know, and, and they're right. feeling like they, they haven't gotten together for two years. They hardly, in many cases, they've had turnover and they, they've they never met their boss in person. Right. And they're feeling a an incredible lack of connection, which is, is is making it hard to hold people accountable. It's it's making it hard to really get give clarity on priorities. What would you say to that leader that's trying to connect with this person they are leading? They're in another country. There's a lot of gaps, even communication wise. What are is there any simple uh, yes. ways? Yes, yes, there are, and I love that you use the word simple. There is some ease, some ease to simplicity. However, simple still requires work, which we know. So I want to make sure that that's super upfront. One of the best ways, and I've worked with some great pharma companies too. They're lucky to have you, David. When you think about global teams, which is what you're setting the stage for, intentionally schedule a certain amount of time each week, invest, it's an invest, it's not a spend, 
in one-on-ones with your people, with your team. My, there's somebody, and I forget the resource right now, but, uh, I think it might be Great Game of Business. Think of the people you work with as direct supports, not direct reports. There's a difference between support and report. And so when you set up, say you're the CEO or C-suite or director, whatever it is, and you're feeling that disconnection, then set up intentional appointments and don't make them 15 minutes. Make them a half an hour, make them 45, whatever that is. Like, hey, I wanna, like, let's, let's get to know each other better. This isn't Kumbaya. At the same time, Kumbaya has some value. So what is the ya you're trying to Kumba with your team? What do you wanna know? You can gamify some of it too. Because be like, well, tell us about the X, Y, Z. Take a picture of you hosting a mug in your backyard. You could put a, a montage together of the different people and then challenge your team. Say, hey, I want to get to know all of you. Here's my schedule. Sign up over the next six months. I, I know that these, some of these teams are enormous. I get that. This is still doable because connection like trust happens one at a time. One step, one effort, mm. one move. So that's that's one way to do it. Also, I, whenever I fly, David, I grab the flight magazine and I, I read the the walkity walk from the airline. I say that with respect. The the head person who's writing the editorial, welcome to you know United or Alaska. And they seem like they're really real people. So the other tip I'll I'll leave with this one is write like you speak. Hmm. Like I've read your books. I like your books. I like them. I have them because I can hear your voice. To me, that engenders not just trust, it helps the message sink in better. And in fact, I've been to one of your workshops from one of your fabulous facilitators. Like, oh, this feels real. So speak real, conjunct your words, like hire the copy editors you need to make sure it sounds like you're having a real conversation online or off. At Trust Edge Leadership Institute, we know how difficult it can be to lead a company through change and how debilitating the last couple of years have been to teams. Based on decades of research, we know that to carve the path forward for your people, you need trust. Trust is the key to reignite your company culture. Trust is what will grow your bottom line, and you can't do it alone. What if you could come together with hundreds of leaders from around the world to increase connection, capacity, and also bottom line impact? That's why the Trusted Leader Summit exists. At the summit, you'll surround yourself with C-suite leaders, meet Olympic gold medalists, connect with high performers, and gain tools from global industry experts that you can implement right away to reignite your people. Join us April 12 through 14 at the Mall of America, JW Marriott. If you lead anyone, if trust and integrity matters to you, if you want a high-performing culture, this summit is for you. Get your tickets at trustedleadersummit.com today, and we can't wait to see you there. That's, this is a really big tip for online. In fact, I heard something, brilliant people seem to kind of come to some of the same things here. I heard someone, I believe on a main stage, we were both speaking together. Um, Aaron King, I believe it just jumped oh, in my yes. head. I don't know her personally, but mm -hmm. she said something. She said, if people would just write like they talk, people would <laughs> want to look at their social media. But instead they say, instead they say silly things. Um, and, and I'll be real authentic here. I never liked it. We had our, our team, and I've got a great team, but they would say, uh, David is honored to speak at wherever today. And I'm like, ugh, I would never say that. That I'm like, <laughs> like I, you know, like, but, but, the, you know, there is something about people knowing where you are and whatever. We don't post hardly as much just because I don't like, you know, I don't like doing social media, you know, so that's kind of <laughs> run through. But, um, but it's like, you know, if I do, I might say something like, well, I learned this while I was speaking, or I, or I, I saw that. Have you ever thought of this? Or, uh, you know, I uh, that was interesting, and maybe I can bring other people along with me. That yes. just gives an interest, a value to them, not like oh about me. It just uh, it, when we started to think of writing, even on social media, more like David um, would say it would speak. It just became much more me. Like I was more great, proud of it, and more like okay, this is on brand, not that kind of whatever right. you know social speak. Yes, and Aaron, I've taken one of Aaron's classes too. Absolutely, you can you can couch your message by starting with the audience. And everybody, frankly, I, I rarely wave the should. But think about that seriously because you can get to what you offer, and if it's truly an offer, the right person will pick it up. Make sure it relates to that audience first. That's the connection. That's the trust you're building. Totally, one hundred percent with you. Love it. So I got to get to this because this is interesting. You wrote an article on it. Everybody can learn more. Gingerjohnson.com. Ginger Johnson. Make it snappy, Ginger. All right. Ginger, I'm sure somebody said that. But that, <laughs> the former nickname. you are. Yes. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ginger, gingerjohnson.com. And um, you'll see all this in the show notes and where you can find out a whole lot more of this, about this chief connector and friend of mine. But I want to jump into the Activate the POW. Mm, yes. Tell us about it. Like you, David, I've written some books. And while we need to have a cup of coffee and find out why you've re- exactly written your books, I could hedge a bet. I wrote the book because I wanted it to be a tool. It's actually my second book. It's the Connectivity Canon. And as I was writing it, I got it. You get in, I get into flow. I love to write. Get into flow and things start coming out. I'm like, why? Why is this easy for me? Or why does this feel easy for me? Which is the whole reason I wrote this. People are like, you're so good at this. How do you know everybody when you walk in the room? Like, I'm listening different. It's like the ears changed up like a potato head doll. Like, oh, they're saying something. There's something that they want that I can teach them. And so as I was writing the canon, I realized, David, that there, there some themes were coming up over and over again. I'm a positive person just like you are. As I come out our pores, so we're either people or we're not. And that's very obvious right up front. Positive is the first part of POW. You must be in the positive space because if you're in the positive space, you don't have room for the negative either, right? Positive is trusting. Positive is silver linings. Positive is the snowstorm. And I've got all the cocoa and goodies I need and I'm inside. The object- How do you do it? How, hold, 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 we got to yeah. jump in here because how do we get, so and for mm. good reasons. Somebody else has, um, you know, in COVID, they're in a tiny apartment. The, yes. uh, mo- mom is trying to lead these kids and she's doing her job. Husband has COVID maybe, or you know, partner has COVID, whatever. They're, and, and they're stuck in this tiny apartment. This is happening. That's happening. Their parents just passed away. I mean, th- there's real stuff going on. And right. and, and, and the, the, the dog's sick. What, do, what right. do we, you know, how do we, you know, what are some ways we can bring this? Yes. Um, Positive. Yes, yes, you're right. Because this is not just a Calgon. For those that it's not natural for, for you and I, it's natural, right? It's it's natural to start there, and and it's not always fair because we had good. uh, For me, I think of my upbringing, a whole lot of things that built that in me that wasn't because of me, and yet I see what happened to someone else, and it's not their fault that that happened to them, and yet they have to carry a different weight than me, and I'm frustrated that they're not positive. Right, right. You're absolutely right. I'm glad you stopped the bus and said, "Hang on, let's back up." The POW must start with the why and mindset. The why is your purpose, it's your vision. It's literally shutting your eyes. If you're listening right now, close your eyes, take a deep breath and say, okay, why am I doing this thing? What, what is this work I've chosen to engage in? What is this spousal arrangement, this, these children, the, the dog, the, whatever it is in every kind of configuration, why are we doing this thing? Why am I waking up and jumping into this? That's a really, really big question. That's learning to trust yourself for the vision. That's the stuff that gets us through the slog and the slew and the muck. And a lot of people, you're right. There's no disrespect to that. There's, whew, yeah, this is one unprecedented time at the same time. No matter when you're listening to this, there will always, that's called life. Welcome. (laughs) It was not an easy pass. It was like, this is life. So to pause in those moments or to pause at the beginning of your day, meditate, whatever. Meditation doesn't have to be sitting with your legs crossed. It's pausing in a quiet space, in a closet, in the corner of the kitchen, outside on your stoop or on your balcony. (sighs) Okay, self, remind me. Talk, self-talk, I think, is really powerful. Uh, and and recenter. Why are we doing this? We've both had, you know, in our conversations, Dave, we talk about like what the tough stuff and getting through. And while it might feel very frivolous or white collar, like actually, it still matters. There's nothing small about anybody's life. So to reframe and get back into the why we're doing this thing, and then give yourself the permission. That's a whole other topic we can talk about another time. The permission slips to let go of what still is congesting the traffic of your life. Once you've got that why reestablished, okay, I marry this person because I love them. I'm still in that space. Is this still a relationship I'm willing to invest in? Yes. Then the mindset, that's where the POW starts to come in. If I'm going to say yes to this, then I'm choosing, this is a choice. I am choosing to be in the positive mindset. What is that? That means looking for the positive, looking for the why in the road, as I call it in my book too. And I teach my growth model. When we reach those whys, it's not a yes or no. It's a, it's a stay or go, David. So we stay the course or we go in a different direction. So you're right. We need to tee up. This is not just some piece of fluff. Yeah. And I, I want to get to the others, but mm-hmm. I, I love this because I know you and you are um, 
a full, you're, you bring positive and you exude it and it's so fun, but you also are real. And that's what I love about this. It's not just some kind of kumbaya. It's like, and the, and the why, by the way, for people is, is a why in the road. It's not just just having the why, the purpose. Yes. A couple yes. of ideas come to mind that I want to link together of what you already said. Um, you said pause, maybe pause and breathe. In a moment, that can help us think positive. Uh, yes. For me, exercise can help me, movement yep. can help me be uh, more positive, letting things go. But one thing you said already uh, earlier, being grateful. So mm -hmm. Lisa calls it see the good. Uh, my Ooh. wife, Lisa, yeah. see the good. And mm -hmm. sometimes we're like, oh, the something in the morning, like we're – this is frustrating. If that's happened or what the kid, what kind of choice did they not watch us as amazing parents that we are? No. <laughs> you know, but, but we'll hold hands in bed uh, before we get up or before we sleep and we'll just say, okay, what are you grateful yeah. for? We, we, we got to stop that talk. It's not that we don't want to see the negative and deal with it, right. uh, but we got to pause and just start naming the good. If we really get, if we're yeah. frustrated about something, just holding hands and saying, oh yeah, but I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful. That yes. does shift toward positive for us. So it's one idea that piggybacks on what you're doing. So the yeah. P is positive. O. O is objective. I debated between open-minded and objective, David, and objective quickly rose to the top because you can have a whole room of people, and I do this when I'm giving keynotes or main stages, like raise your hand if you think you're open-minded. What's going to happen? Everybody's going to raise their hand or stand up. You can see this coming, fish in a barrel. And then if I say, okay, keep your hand raised or stay standing if you'll join me for some raw octopus pizza. Like what happens? Most people sit down. Now that might seem slightly ridiculous and no, I'm not gonna serve that up because I don't particularly care for raw octopus. But the point is that objective is suspending judgment. Open-minded is a self-prescribed, yeah, I'm open-minded. Everyone's gonna say they're open-minded. Well, what are you open to is the qualifier. If you're objective, you're suspending judgment. And again, if you're in that zone, you literally can't be judgmental. The objective is the curious. In fact, a concept I teach that some of my leaders absolutely love is hyper-curious, David. When we are hyper curious, that objectivity just goes bonkers. Like, whoa, here I go, the whole sandbox is mine. Because I think, oh, then what's possible in this? And you start to chase the chain of the open-ended journalistic questions. I call them the pro seven, the who, what, why, where, when, how, and which. And then just like you and Lisa, like, oh yeah, the frame completely switches. The stuff is still there. Yet that stuff is also different too. We inherently change the stuff because we change ourselves. So objective, suspending judgment, what's really going on here? That's what objective is about. I love it. And we got the great seven questions. Okay, here we go. Pow, pow, pow with a W. <laughs> Boom. While the number one trait desired by boards for CEOs is reliability, reliability relies on willingness. Willing is the W. You've got to be willing, David, I know you know this, you've got to be willing to trust, you've got to be willing to connect, you've got to be willing to walk through that door or to get on the screen, to do the thing, to get to the, the, the objectives, the goals, the accomplishments, to enjoy a great sunset with family, whatever that is, that willingness is the, the propulsion. I would say that it's the most important piece of POW. When we are willing, we literally, we are open. Our, our physicality is open. Our physiology is open. And we say, all right, this is what I've chosen. Again, founded in the why and the mindset, that willingness really gets goes from, from, from momentum and traction to turning into a flywheel, which that self-perpetuation. I love it. I love something you said a while ago. Connection happens one at a time. Now we've got POW, P-O-W, positive, objective, and willing. You've given us so much in just 20 <laughs> uh, some minutes. Boom. So let's go here because let's get a little bit personal on everybody has dinner parties. Everybody's trying to connect with people at home. You wrote a great article on connection over dinner and maybe this just with our own family but what are some ideas we got there's technology there's interruptions there's this is one of the things my pet peeve is actually people that not not the people but if people wear a smartwatch and don't have it shut oh. off you know what I mean? Oh, I got to oh, buzz, buzz, buzz. Like I've got an old fashioned one, but partly I just that when every every time they jerk, when the their arm buzzes, it, it just is like, oh, my goodness, am I here or what? So how do we do it in this new world? How do we kind of have give us some tips for connecting over dinner? 
Yeah, great question. First of all, I'm sure you've heard of you put the, the cell phone, phone pile somewhere in the first one. Like if you're at a restaurant, the first one who picks up has to pay. Okay. If you're going to do a punishment, do something that you really don't want to do. It's not like, yeah, I bought dinner for everybody. I'm like, no, 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 don't eat to something that you hate. Anyway, it hates a stranger. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How yeah, do you do yeah. that? You set the premise, you set the tone. We're only distracted if we let ourselves be. So, for example, your your team with the pharma company you mentioned, there's no shenanigans once we're getting into business. And this business happens to have some very profound impacts. So don't allow or let me rephrase that so it's positive. Set the bar, set the tone, be the example for saying there is no distraction. So put your things over there, put them in the other room, whatever it is, collect them. If you need to do that, then do that. Nobody's going to die if you're not wearing your smartphone or your watch or whatever those doohickeys are. We, I mean, you remember the days where you still grabbed the phone from the wall, right? I, I, I know. We, we didn't wonder who was calling while we're out running errands. Um, so exactly. set the tone as the leader. And a leader, by the way, is not position descriptive. You can lead in every single way, shape, or form, age, make, model, size, color, position, whatever it is. Be the leader in your own mind. Say, I'm not going to let myself get distracted. This is a choice. So I'm going to do this. If you are the leader, if you're the organizer, then set that tone of, you know, no cell phones. And you say it. It's kind of like being on an airplane, you know, leave your seatbelt fastened. Well, we all hear the people unclicking. And I always think, what are you trying to prove or why are you doing that? Like, what does that accomplish? It doesn't accomplish anything. So being benevolent, being being a, a kind leader and still being firm, first of all, when they know you're serious, they will follow suit. You know this, that's trust. That's also stronger connection. Like, okay, well, David's telling me I have to do this. And then all of a sudden what David's given me is that is that invite to say, Ginger, I want you here and this matters. So I'm going to help you be focused. So that's one thing. At, at dinner parties, like I just gave the uh, board of directors at a... Um, advanced practitioner board retreat before their board meeting. And I had teed it up with those questions, some of those questions. What do I want them to intentionally talk about to get different kinds of juices flowing so they connect with each other in a new, more meaningful way? Once you start doing that as a habit, as a pattern, then it starts to take off by itself. And then, hey, how about this? Pass the baton once in a while. Who is your right hand? Who's another person that we rarely hear from, which is a whole other conversation for another time. There's different ways to make sure everybody contributes and participates in a way that matters and is meaningful. So pass the baton. You know, you say, Ginger, I want you to do this this time. Like, oh, okay, well, give me a couple guardrails. And you say, okay, this is you. I'm trusting you. Go for it. Make it yours. Okay. Hmm. When given the opportunity, I think everybody listening, David, I think you know this. I know I know this. When given the opportunity and teed up in a safe space with grace, everybody rises to the challenge. Hmm. That's powerful. I love it. Pass the baton. Let yeah. people rise to the challenge. Let people yeah. lead. Yeah. Uh, I love some of the, some of, you can use pow right in the dinner party. All these things yeah. work together. Absolutely. So, wow. There's, Dropping there's, a lot here. Right. Yes. Me, Go ahead. Let me give you one little tiny postscript. When you're in those moments and you see it going sideways, because it's not always going to go forward. When you see it going sideways and the positivity starts to you know, detour to the negative, then it's your responsibility to bring them on back. And what you can do, a couple symbols, whether you're watching or listening, um, if you're watching, you can see this. If you're listening, make your hands in the sign of the universal T syndrome, the timeout, and bring it on back. Yeah. So if we're talking and I start to go down a rabbit trail, David, you can hold up and make that T symbol where your tips of one hand hit the inside of the, the middle of your other hand and say, hang on, Ginger. Now, that thing you were talking about earlier, you can just get rid of the stuff that started turning negative and go back to what the point was or where the conversation really is going to flourish. You know, Ginger, when you were talking about this thing, uh, tell me more. Tell me more. It's a phenomenal phrase. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about that. Let's keep going on that. You can physically do that. I raise my hand if I'm in a room or I'm on an interview or something like that. And people are like, oh, oh, you have something? So that's that's like a kind interruption tactic too. Because yeah. all of a sudden people are wondering, should I be doing this? It just stops, <laughs> pauses. It's kind. You're not being real. Like, I used to be a radio host. I wish I could have raised my hand yeah. on the radio. <laughs> so those yeah. are a couple of tactics to help bring it on back more in that vein of connection, trust, pow, and, and progress. 
loads of uh, just little tips and take with the, that whole phrase of tell me more and, you know, uh, uh, just a, a, a lot here. I'm so grateful for you. Um, where can we find out more? You've got a couple great books. We're going to put all this in the show notes, trustedleadershow.com. Uh, where, where, where do you want us to come? Where can we connect with you first? So good, David. Thank you. I'm so honored to be here. Uh, gingerjohnson.com. That was a joke for those of you listening to earlier. Gingerjohnson.com is where the nexus is. You can go there. You can connect with me. You can set up an appointment. If you've got a stage, you're looking to have somebody great. If David's already been there, go to him first. If you're looking for another great person, I'd love to be there. The book is on there. It's a brand new site, Working With Your Friends and Mine from Video Narrative. Um, yep. and the speaker real, everything starts there. I'm very active on LinkedIn. Would love to hear from some leaders. What was useful? Would love to find out from you. Uh, oh, mighty listener, but that's, that's where it's all going down the book and the whole nine yards. Perfect. Before I get to the final question, so gingerjohnson.com, but the final question, before we get to the final question, one more connection tip you can put from anything you've written or said one quote statement or yes. tip. I got it. Watch your language. And this isn't your eighth grade English teacher telling you this. Go for the positive. One of the best pieces of advice I've ever gotten in my life from Jack Anderson from the Ace Hardware Corporation. Interesting, his last name starts with A-N-D. Is to use and instead of but. Replace your and and you change your world. And is additive, but is subtractive, dismissive, discounting. Leaders think about the and. It's the classic improv, yes, and start with and. The magic of and is a life changer. Challenge yourself, have somebody you do this with. Anytime somebody says, but, catch them, do a hand, do some sort of something, like, oh, right, changes everything. Absolutely. Here we are. Okay. Landing the plane, though we could we could fly to another we could fly or, to another city of connection. We could make another connection, right? Uh, yes. This is not a connecting flight. We have to land this one. Final question. Final question is: It's the Trusted Leader Show. Who's the leader you trust, and why? I'm gonna pick today from the whole army of people. I'm grateful to know Terry Carden. Terry Carden has started multiple businesses. She's a software engineer. She serves associations. I look to Terry as a trusted leader because she's hundred percent real. Just like you were talking earlier. She's truly what authentic says in the dictionary. She's having fun. She's living the life. She's doing the thing. She's digging in. She never loses her sense of humor. She always has her sense of empathy and humanity. And I, she's so much fun to be with. I think that fun leaders are so grounded. And so Terry is Terry is a leader I absolutely trust, uh, I adore, and I encourage anybody who wants to look at somebody like her to look her up for sure. Fantastic. Ginger, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for being my friend. That's been the Trusted Leader Show this time. Until next time, stay trusted.